There it is. All right. The clove hitch killer <laughs> with my special guest yet again with a little lipstick on her tooth. Where? Just a teeny bit. Where? Yeah, that one. You got that one? It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, huh? Is that? Is that blood? You've been biting? Yeah, a well, little more. <laughs> a little more. She's the clove hitch killer. Have I been biting what? I don't know. You got it? You're good? No. Okay. Anyway, so. <clears throat> We watched a movie. We did. We did. We did. It was a great movie. Yeah. So she's blowing her load. And a little quick here. It was to, a horrible movie. You're supposed to build. You're supposed to build that <laughs> excitement of like, what's your thoughts? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. That's gone. So there you go. Bye, guys. See you later. All right. So, so you liked the movie. We got that. All right. So this stars Dylan McDermott. The Practice. The Practice. That's the name she gives people from whatever show they and were in that she recognizes them from most. That's their name for life. Yes. So this is the practice. The and practice. somebody who looks like One Tree Hill, but isn't <laughs> One Tree Hill. <laughs> I was going to call him Chad Michael Murray Jr. Yeah. Yeah. It looks a lot like him. I will say that. I, I recognize the kid's picture, but probably because I've looked up this movie a lot over the years. Um, over the years. Over the, over the years, over the years. No, over the last couple weeks, since I saw that this movie was coming out over the years. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Fucking out of my mind. Um, Nothing new there. <laughs> no, but I, I looked up this movie so many times. It feels like years. <laughs> How many times I fucking look this movie up now? Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to pay the price tag of six ninety nine to rent it. Cause that's that's a hefty price pay? tag, six ninety nine. Mm, yeah, yeah, I did pay it because I knew this is a movie that she was probably gonna like. This is true crime like. I, I don't think this has anything to do with reality, but it's true crime like. Um, it could happen. That's her big requirement. Usually, she likes movies where people could actually die this way. She doesn't like monsters and stuff like that. Usually. Um, but it also has uh, the practice in it, which is uh, a, a lover of He's 47, of hers. right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't look up his age. Um, but yeah, it was just one that I figured was geared towards you. Hmm. And uh, I guess I was right for once. We haven't had a hit in a while. You were right. And I had seen that it had, he was going to be, uh, the practice was going to be in a horror, uh, serial killer movie. Yeah. So that was immediate for her. I was like, Ooh, done. So, and then you mentioned it and I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch that. So, but no, seriously guys, this is an excellent thriller. Um, I wouldn't really consider this a horror movie. I no, don't, I don't really see anything to call this a horror movie. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on. What you consider horror. What you consider horror. Right. It's definitely much more of a drama thriller. Yes. Um, it's not slow, though. I never felt like the film was slow in the yeah. sense of, like, plodding along and it's like, all right, like, let's get to the next scene. It is slow, technically, but it never feels that way. It's never, it's never boring. It's never um, like, oh, my God. We just get on with the story. And it's pretty surprising, too. There were moments that I genuinely was like, oh, shit, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, and, I, and I really appreciated the film for that. Um, I like that it keeps you guessing. Yeah. It's definitely not Hollywooded out either in the slightest. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of moments in this film that they could have went way more theatrical with it. It could have been, yeah, like, wow. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yeah, you could have... There were moments in the movie where, and, and maybe because I watched so many films, because I watched so many, you know, extravagant things that I actually felt a little underwhelmed at first with some of the decisions. Or I was like, oh, they could have went this way with that and it could have been more grand and then they could have had this connection with this one. And, but that actually, when I, when, I, when I stopped the film and I sat down and I thought about it for a minute, I was like, hmm then that would have made things a lot more either convoluted or convenient or both. And I don't feel like this film plays like that. This film um, kind of ditches those typical moments
moments in the movie where they would be like, oh, and then it's this, and it's connected to this, and it's that, and then this happens. It's, I don't know. It, it doesn't have that going on. But the reveals, while not crazy like that, they do hit you. Mm. And they do work really well. Mm. The acting in this is all very, very good mm -hmm. uh, from everybody. I don't think there's anyone who stands out like, uh, this person could have, you know, changed it up a little bit. No, it was all really well done there. Um, what do you, I mean, is there any like standout stuff for you? Obviously we're not talking spoilers for a minute. Uh, we'll give you fair warning be because we definitely want to talk spoilers. We'll be way more interesting when spoilers hit. I'm trying to think of not spoiling anything. <laughs> right. It's tough. Uh, Talking movies without spoilers is tough. Yeah, no, I, like I said, I like that it keeps you guessing. I think all of the performances are great. I think the practice was... Dylan McDermott. <laughs> really good at the nerdy dad. Yeah. You know, I think that... For anyone who doesn't know that this what this movie is about, um, there was a serial killer called the Clove Hitch Killer that had kind of fallen into retirement, I suppose, about a decade previously. Did he? But did he? Yes, we'll get into that. Um, and there's this kid, he lives, in, he lives with his family, he's about 16 years old, and his family is very Christian, he's part of the Boy Scouts, his dad is like, you know, the model citizen, the real boring, uptight dad. The, uh, the mom. What do they call it? Like the, the troop leader? Like the, yeah, troop leader. Is yeah. that what they call it? I a Boy so. Scout troop leader? Yeah, yeah, he's a troop <laughs> I mean, leader. I remember that from the brownies when I was in the brownies. You know, my mom was the troop leader, but I don't know if it was the same for boys. I think that's what it's called. Hmm. Pretty sure. He's a troop leader. Yeah. Um, and then his son uh, stumbles onto something in his uh, tool shed that makes him ponder and wonder Could if his father might be the retired clove hitch killer so he digs further and doesn't like what he finds and he befriends a uh, you a know lady. an outcast girl in town a girl who's frowned upon by his you know his peers the people that he surrounds himself are all very very christian very by the book very you know whatnot and she's you know trash and so him even speaking to her is beneath everyone he's involved with um and i really like their dynamic together yeah um because this kid was a total fucking pussy at the beginning of this movie i don't want to beat his face in and i just couldn't handle that kind of stuff like i just what mm, kid the, the, the main friend? kid oh no the main kid in this movie like he just uh... he had no ability to think for himself he didn't really stand up for himself and this girl needed to harden him up a little bit. And I, and I dug the chemistry between them. Um, it doesn't, it never plays cheesy romantic with them. It never like any of that kind of stuff. This film is very serious um, and super well done. Um, so yeah, I think that's about all we're gonna say when it comes to the spoiler free part of it. But I would say this is a huge recommendation from both of us and outside of something like American Psycho, which we'd already seen. Um, the only other one we did was uh, Quiet Place, right? Mm -hmm. Which I really enjoyed in theaters. She didn't care for it much. Oh, and then we did Gremlins too, And okay. she wasn't a big fan of that. But this one, we're finally on the same page. We are. Big two thumbs up our butts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and definitely check it out. All right, we're moving into spoilers. I'm fucking over talking like this. So spoilers from here I'm on people. So afraid I'm so, going to give something away. Like, yeah, you were afraid? I'm like, it's hard. That's hard. You're biting your nails. No, mm -hmm. I'm the one that bites my, my painted my painted nails. You shouldn't do it. It's filthy and disgusting. It is filthy and disgusting, especially when I'm putting thumbs up my butt. Especially when you're doing that. Yes. Apparently it's a, um, I don't know if I've told you this, but it's spite for a parent. It's a, it's a tick. Oh, it's a tick for spite for my parent? Oh my god, there's no way that could be accurate. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah. Alright, so... Spoiler talk. Um, so, when this guy... Did you ever think in this movie, for a second, that Dylan was not Clovitch? Yeah. 
I kept okay. going back and forth. Like, did you? Yeah, okay. totally. I was so like, you... maybe you did, maybe you did. Well, even right before homie shows up. You were thinking, like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember I was, you were going back and forth. Because right, I had right. my... Your theories. Yeah, I was like, oh, maybe he just needs it. We're being very vague here. So throughout... Well, I don't want to jump into the end of the movie. Well, I know, but people need to know what the fuck we're talking about. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this kid, he's got his family here in the opening. He is in, you know, they're in complete control of him. Um, his mom, he calls, God. He calls his mom ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ugh. Blech. No. That's like, no. Big no no. And not in like a funny way to like make your mom mad. No. Not like how when I call my mom ma'am. No, he totally buys into their bullshit. Yeah, like, yeah. yes ma'am, no ma'am. Yeah. yeah. I don't sir? feel like... Sir? Does he call his dad sir? Uh -huh. I don't know. I like. I don't know if I ever get the impression that he feels like his parents are overbearing in this movie. Like, I, I don't feel like his mom and his relationship is becoming estranged because she's so dominant in his life. Like, and and so because okay, so he's making out with this girl in the car, and they're gonna fuck maybe. Like, it seemed like they were getting. She was like, lean this chair back. Like, something was about to get. You know, they were probably hot and just heavy. gonna make out. Yeah, Probably over just, the clothes. I mean, she's a total church girl. Under so. the bra. <laughs> Calvin's and a ball in the front seat. <laughs> and praying to God your parents don't walk in. Um, but yeah, so they're making out. What, whether or not they're actually going to do anything physical, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I, I, think I don't think they were because, I, as I said, I think he really buys into their, their bullshit. And she does too, so... Yeah, because they like when like she a, finds it's, you this can tell picture. It's a small town. It's a church town. It's a. I mean, that's how. Yeah. Small church towns are. It's, right. So she finds this picture of some S and M, some ball gags, some bring out the gimp, Pulp Fiction shit. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah. She immediately like jumps to that it's him because. He had lied and said that. That was it his was truck. His truck. I, I'm not sure, but I think that's what was going on. But it's a small town. Like, she knows that's his dad's truck. Yeah. But he takes the magnets off the side, so he thinks it's her truck. I don't know. But she thinks it's his. Which, this chick's a total bitch, and I'm glad that he ditched her anyways. And I'm, I hope that I hope that the, you know, the delinquent, the slut in town did kind of make him a more normal person. What I guess I consider to be normal. Maybe that is the ideal normal and I'm just you know the uh, thorn in, in society side yes uh, it, possible I guess but, and it probably is I just it's more probable. his family sucked in this like <laughs> they're the embodiment of everything wrong mm -hmm. with society in my opinion like the conservative side of shit like that those parents awful yes they're I, very I, conservative I, and they're very religious and awful just awful. I yeah, I, I could never <laughs> exist around people like that. They take everything way too fucking seriously, and like so they can't even <laughs> masturbate to like they're not even allowed to masturbate. They're not allowed to look at pictures of naked women. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is stupid. Just rejecting like your impulses, rejecting the human condition. Fuck all that. That is ridiculous. Anyways, we're not here to talk about you know that. Kind you want to get but. Jason super heated? Oh my start God, there's religion. lots of things. Oh, religion. Jesus. Don't it's, start. Don't start. It's fun. No, you want to get me super heated, throw on the show fucking Hoarders. And I just, <laughs> I've and never I get, watched it with him. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't do it. Don't do it. So um, she finds this erotica yeah. photo of bondage and flips the fuck out. Yeah. Which is weird because it was on his side. Yeah, it was on the passenger side, and he tries to tell her that it's not his, and she's just like, yeah, cool, whatever. Which I guess could kind of go to, well, maybe not. No, I guess that wouldn't work. I was going to say maybe the uncle would have had it in his pocket, but the uncle can't even move, so that doesn't really work. Trying to make it look like it's the uncle later in the movie. Right. Which, yeah, I mean, for a second, you're kind of like, hmm, and you had a good point. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, then she goes and, what a bitch. She like, just totally demonizes yeah. him to everybody. Well, Without even listening she to She apparently them. only texted one person. One about person. It, and it blew well, up and that's all the true kids though. Know. That's how that shit happens. And in small towns, yeah. I mean Oh my god, what a pervert. He looks at Yeah, he's a perv and he's got this shitty little friend. But or what, used to be friend. Oh that's god. so judgmental he's and so asshole awful. and He's so awful. Anybody he, would want to be somewhere friends with someone like oh. that. That's not a friend. 
A friend would listen to yeah. you. And he won't even listen. Like, he just no. shuts down the conversation. It's just like, it's wrong. It's disgusting. You're gross. Yeah. You're a perv. Awful. Don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why anyone would want to be like that? Why anyone would want to associate with anyone like that? Well, she like called that, him out, and I think that that's it. Because I was like, oh, he's... Because when he was doing all that, I'm like, oh, he's repressing something. And she's like, just come out already. Oh, my God. Yeah. That would be so yeah. offensive to even people on the other side of this fence, though. Right? The real liberals. Yeah. Like, oh my God, would he has to be a homosexual because he had the fuck? Yeah, that guy was gay. Well, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty obvious lots in the movie. Of people, yeah, lots it's of... not a bad thing. It's just, yeah, he's totally replaced with his homosexuality. It's all right. Um, but uh, yeah. Th now, do you think that it would have been as big of a deal if it wasn't as kinky as it was? Like, it if it was just kinky. a naked chick. It was a chick with a ball gag tied up. It's fucking kinky. What do you mean that's not kinky? What do you consider kinky? Like, there fucking had to be bestiality I mean, in there and shit? Like, uh, bloodletting? I'm just saying that me, personally, kinky. I would not freak out if I found someone had a photo of a chick with a ball gag and be like, But oh. she was, like, hogtied. It was, like, half of a photo. She was like hog tied in the picture. It was half of a photo. You could just see like her face and like she, she was, was wearing a full. Up. No, she wasn't. Okay, well, I have to look at this picture. We're again. gonna have to. Because I'm so perverted. I made it more perverted in my <laughs> mind. It was just a girl like in a bikini, but in my mind, I don't it was like a girl with ball. She had like no, old... you see her tits. Is okay. that what you're gonna say? She had like an old bra on or something like that, like the old fifties bras. No. I'm fucked True. in the head, I guess. I saw it way worse than it was, I guess. Yeah, no, I'm gonna, we're gonna go back. I have the rental guy. still. Yeah. It was like 24 hours yeah. or we'll 48 look. hours. We're gonna have to look at this picture. But I swear it was more kinky. But saying I'm right, which I am, well, do you think maybe. Maybe that it, if maybe. it was like maybe Victoria's I'm Secret so. catalog, <laughs> do you think she would have been like, <laughs> you're a pervert, this is what you're looking for? It's because she's like, is this what you want? Because the ball yeah, gag, and, and I think that. she was so intimidated by what he could possibly want from her, and she's like, "I'm way too tame for this shit. You fight, you freak. Like, what is this shit? This is way beyond anywhere I would go." But also, as I say, like she's she's jealous. She's jealous, like that he's at that level, and she's just not there. And he's like looking at other women, and he he wants this fantasy that she's unable to give him. Even at her current status, like, she's a virgin, I'm sure. And she's, you know, missionary, blah, sex on wedding night would be kinky for her. Maybe. So, maybe. Maybe not. I mean, I she know. could be a total fucking freak. I don't know what her problem is, but no. I felt like she overreacted. Oh, fuck. Over nothing. Everyone in this movie overreacts. Um, but, yeah. So, so then he's outed in the, in the friend's community. Yeah. Whatever. And he has to resort to this girl. So he makes friends with... The, the slut. What was her name? Redheaded girl. Redheaded girl. Yeah. Right. No. Uh, I didn't. I didn't take notes for this. I didn't take so notes either. I couldn't tell you anyone in this name. I bet so if we took notes, we would have a better idea of what that picture really was. No. Don't listen to all that. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, then he goes into the uh, little workshop there, and he finds the picture. Yeah. Why did he decide to go in there? I don't remember that. Why did he like decide he just, to go in there? He knows that it's off limits. Well, you know, yeah, it was off limits, and he was like, what the hell is he doing in there? Then he asked his mom, and his, his mom was like, it's just your dad doing it, so it's fine. Yeah. Something like that. I think, yeah, I think he just was like... Curious. Yeah, what the fuck, you know? Oh, uh, it's he was, yeah, what the fuck, because he found that photo, and it's his dad's truck. Right, exactly. And then there he's you, looking yeah, out, yeah, and he's like... Yeah, he's like, what's up with this motherfucker? Like, I bet he has a yeah. porno stash. And so he, he goes does. in, and, and finds, then he, he finds uh, the porn stash of bondage, yes. and then he finds he finds the Polaroid, a Polaroid that of Lucky's is favorite of a hog. I think she was. I think she she she's was tied up. Guy. Oh yeah, ball gag. Yeah. Uh, and it said Nora, Lucky's favorite. Yeah, Nora. Nora. Lucky's favorite. Yeah. And so, um, Chad Michael Murray Jr. goes <laughs> and looks it up on the computer. Yeah. And he's looking for Nora, dead, deceased, yeah. Clove Hitch County, whatever, um, and finds her. Yeah, and then he finds that it's And one mom of the walks in on him. Which, if you're watching this, you you know what we're talking about. Late at night. 
Uh, yeah, and then his mom thinks he's looking at and pornography, she and she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't even like she listen even, to a word. Because he tries to tell her he's lying to her. I mean, I'm he is lying when to her, her. Child is lying, but. But she immediately jumps to porn. He could have been yeah. doing anything on there. Really anything. I mean, literally, there's so many things he could Maybe have been getting in trouble rumors. for. Maybe she. Had and that's where I take it. I, I she heard that he's a pervert. And now she catches them on the computer after hours. So way after hours. Yeah. So it's yeah. Immediately it's porn, um, which is funny because she's the chick in American Psycho, kind of bringing it back ah, around. Yeah, she yeah. is. So connection. Or a thing called love, whichever. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so he starts to he starts to suspect, and this girl, the 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 outcast, is he the resident. Um, know it all on the clove hitch killer. Yes. Um, I thought it was pretty obvious, and I guessed this way early on that her mother was killed by clove hitch. I, I think that that yeah. was pretty obvious. I mean, she has no mother. Hey, a. trash panda. Um, she's going to eat the food, I guess. <laughs> um, Sorry. But yeah, I mean, I think she knows, like, um, I could just tell because yeah. she. Because he goes to the house and it's a and it's a de detective. She knows the detective, and I'm like, okay, she had to be involved the with files. the case. Yeah, there there had to be some connection for her to be this obsessed with. It has to be her mom. Mm -hmm. Her dad's an alcoholic, you know, who's too hungover to even acknowledge her. Blah blah blah. Um, I did love the I I do like that. The clove hitches marks are not just typical. 20 year old co-ed hot chicks mm. like the chicks he goes after and especially like lucky's favorite it's like an old she's like a 40 fucking 5 yeah. 50 year old woman who yeah. is not even slightly attractive to me personally I mean, you find her clovish obviously finds her hot but there's something about him and i think this is a mother issue if you were to like start to analyze it like he, he's you know he's gagging up his mom because these women they don't they they're not very sexually appealing they're like middle-aged housewives who have you know they're they're not very they're not fit they're not like you know um they're not milfs or anything they're 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 not attractive women like the the woman he goes for at the end of this movie the woman in the picture that he finds nora is you know she's like a third grade teacher you know she's got that look to her that that you know yeah. Not very attractive, like, you know, whatever. Um, not that all third grade teachers are unattractive. I'm sure there's some out there, but... Yeah, I'm sure there's lots of them that are very attractive yeah. people. Oh, that Veronica Vaughn. So, so hot. I want to say that's that's third grade. That is third grade. Is she third grade? And that's Veronica Vaughn. She's, like, mm -hmm. one of the hottest characters ever. I don't know what I'm talking about. She ain't Veronica Vaughn. I'm going to say that. She's Nora is not Veronica Vaughn. Most people are not Veronica Vaughn. No, Vaughn. no. Um, but yeah, so they, um, he finds, he finds like the, all that stuff. His, and then his signature, his calling card, um, is a clove. special. Yeah. The clove hitch knot that he leaves. Is that at, what it is? Yeah. I thought clove hitch was the town. Clove hitch is the, is the knot. Oh. Specifically. Makes yeah. more sense. Mm -hmm. It's the clove hitch killer. Yeah. yeah. So it's he leaves it at every, yeah, that's a. That's his calling That's card, and she's like, she's trying to explain to him that it's, you know, the th the thumbprint, the yeah. fingerprint of serial killers is their calling cards, and she has all this information about everything, and she's she's, yeah, she's already she's, convinced that it's the dad. Like he hasn't even shown her. Anything. Well, he she laughs in his face when he immediate like when he brings it up to her the begin in the beginning. Mm. Don't touch. Don't fall. Sorry. Um. Technical difficult. <laughs> but yeah, no, she laughs in his face. He brings him and she's like, it's not your fucking dad. Trust well, me, I know this case. Don't hurt it. I thought that she was... <laughs> yeah, okay. You... But then, yeah, then she, once she realizes she finds rope fibers and when I when she well, turns yeah, into a CSI was... down in the basement after he finds the pictures. Because then he goes down in the basement and he finds this total fucking torture room down there. With a shower and a fridge, and, and I don't know toilet. if that's where he goes to jack off and whatnot, because he—I don't think he's ever kept anyone in there that I can tell. 
and he kills people at their house, leaves the fucking signature behind and takes off. But he's been gone for 10 years. Now, when him and the girl break into the dad's shed, they first find, um, they, he moved the original box with the porn and Nora's, Nora, Lucky's favorite. And then moves it down into the, under well, the they find a, a blueprint. Yeah, a blueprint for his torture room. Torture room. His torture room of fun. Yeah. All the shit that's written on there is pretty funny. Yeah. It's this whole diagram of like his torture. It's like a five-year-old's fantasy. <laughs> the, the drawings are hilarious. I'm like, this is like drama <laughs> drawn by an eight-year-old. So then, and I remember, like, that's what I, because I remember watching it and I was watching, I don't know if you saw me yeah. was doing this, because I was so afraid he was going to get caught. I was so afraid his dad was going to walk in on him. And I had that anticipation of like, <laughs> you're going to get, get out of there. You're going to get busted. Yeah, she was freaking yeah, out. I really was. Yeah. And yeah, he goes under the house. And he went under the house. I was like, get out of there. <laughs> I don't know if that was like supposed to be his representation of that fun house that he had drawn, but that did not look like the photo. <laughs> he did not do a very good job of recreating <laughs> of his... his fantasy, but it looked like he drew that when he maybe was like he 10. Had to, yeah, maybe he had to stop. I have you ever know. like, have you ever tried to build something and you like draw it out and you're like, this looks fucking dope. And then you try to make it and then you put, it's like nailed it. <laughs> and it's like, that looks nothing like the picture. Good job, fuckhead. Like, I've had those moments where I'm like, like I've had this vision of Mine like what I'm gonna do, exactly and then you like. totally, totally. I'm gonna look at all the things she built around the house. There, I built found the whole nothing. house. Yeah. Oh, bare hands. She tore down the trees with her bare hands. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so then yeah, so they do all that and. And he finds all the evidence and he confronts his dad. His dad takes him out camping because his dad knows. And his dad kind of comes clean about it. And this is where the film really stands on its own and becomes its own thing because there's so many different ways that this normally happens. But the dad kind of confronting him and being like, look, and admitting out like, to I it. know. I know you were in my shed. Right. I and know you were down in the basement. Right. And yeah. I mean, I thought honestly. There's so many different ways this movie could have went. I it was just like, I, I was thinking. I was kill him right there. Yeah, I thought the movie, the rest of the movie was going to have him chasing him through the woods. Oh, did you really? I did. I thought the whole rest of the movie was going to take place out there. I thought it was good. The dad was going to come after him. He was going to be running and he was going to have to use his, his Boy Scout abilities mm. to survive the wilderness. I'm glad they didn't do that. Oh, God, yeah. I'm glad the movie went the way it went. Yeah. It just, no, I totally thought that's the way, what was going to happen there. Like, I know you know. And the but and the and, you know the son was gonna be too Christian to allow his dad to get away with it, and they were gonna have like a squabble over the semantics of it, and like his you know like well I do this because she was a whore and whatever like I right. thought I was gonna get into this philosophical debate that ended in this long chase through the wilderness, and it was like who's the best you know Boy Scout here? Who's the one who really can know the the dangers of the forest? And he was gonna build traps and. You know, who knows what. Um, but it didn't, it didn't go that way in the slightest. No. Um, he really did a good job of not only trying to convince him that he wasn't the killer, but convincing her as well. Like, oh shit, maybe he isn't. Because he, he does... He said that it was his brother. And, and it does. And, and this begs the question. Like, there's a couple questions that I definitely want to talk with you. And mm -hmm. one of them being like, it is very coincidental that it coincides with his brother's stroke or whatever happened to him. No, car accident. Car That's accident, right, car yeah. accident. So now, did he stop because the brother got in a car accident? Because they stop at the same time as the brother getting in an accident, which is what makes you believe that it could right. possibly be the brother. It's like, oh, he's yeah. an invalid. And then that goes into like, you thought, well, maybe he just got off on looking at the pictures. And that's why he couldn't get into it. Even when he was dressing up right. and recreating things, which we're going to get into that here in a minute. But did you think that, <laughs> did you think that, uh, you know, you're, you, you got, in my mind, I can't even, what was the question now? Now you got me, this fucking thing. Sorry. Um, you're fine. It's just funny. It's like, really? I, can't, I know. Stop. 
Stop it! I'm a fidgeter. I'm gonna turn into the clove hitch killer here in a second. Hog tie your ass so you can't fucking touch this. Please don't. Okay, go ahead. Um, just so you guys know, my pot, my tripod is broken. I have this thing teeter tottering. <laughs> my camera is literally just sitting up here. Anything hits it, it's gonna fall over. And she keeps kicking the stand with I'm her not foot. Kicking it. She's I'm... no, you're touching it, and it's gonna fall. And I think we're getting a freaking visit from our children as well. You think so? I think so. I'm gonna go straight glove hitch here in a minute. Oh my god! All right, but do you like? What was the question? The, I don't even remember now. No, the brother. Like, do you think he stopped because the brother got injured? Do I think that he stopped because his brother was injured? I haven't put any thought into it. So, I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, why though? Like, I wonder why he would stop because of that. Maybe that just threw a wrench into his life and he maybe, was like... Maybe, maybe he always wanted to use his brother as a... Uh, maybe his brother helped him. Maybe his brother was involved. I don't think so. No. No. I don't think so either. I think... Maybe his think brother like caught the, him. Maybe. And, and maybe he tracked him down and he tried <laughs> to kill him and then he didn't die but he couldn't talk. And then he was like, <laughs> all right, I'm ending this. I mean, like, it, it cost possible. me my brother. Anything's possible. Because he seemed like a genuine dude when he wasn't doing the crazy shit. He mm -hmm. stopped and he lived a normal life with a family that he genuinely seemed to love. So he seemed mm -hmm. like he wasn't well, a total maybe. sociopath that did not love. He just got his shit together and maybe his brother almost dying was enough for him to be like, oh, maybe I should stop. Maybe I should get my life together. Maybe, you know, my kids and my life and whatever. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Or just like the weight of his brother being on his life at that point. It was like... Maybe he found God at the same time his brother got in that accident. Maybe. But his son's so old and I, I would only imagine that... His wife has been that way forever. Yeah. So he would have had to, but maybe he said he was, and then right. he actually bought into it at one point. Right. I, I don't. Yeah, it's an interesting part of it because it is so coincidental that ten years and ten years. Right. You know, so it, it does make you question, like, shit. Maybe it was the brother. That does make sense, but like, it never really is addressed on like what happened to the brother outside of a car wreck. Why? Why would that make him stop? Why he stopped? Like, none of that stuff I don't think is addressed in the film. Which is fine. Right. I, I don't need it addressed. I just... It makes me want to sit here and consider it as well. Um, so after he tells his son this, and... Yeah, he makes him burn brother, the evidence. Yeah, yeah. The son was like, all right, well, we need to burn. You either need to call the police or we need to burn the evidence. And so yeah, His argument was very convincing. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Cause, mm -hmm. And you have to also factor in the son wanted to believe him, like, badly. Well, so yeah, you, you're, you're, talking you about an, you're talking about an audience that you kind of have the ability to manipulate, too. But you're not on the side of wanting to believe him. And even you were questioning it. So even though, I yes, the, the son is biased mm -hmm. because he does want to believe it, his story is believable enough that even on the outside, you'd be like, fuck, I don't know. But the, where is the it, bias plays into this is that the son doesn't want to even expose the brother because he doesn't want to hurt the family. And that rings true throughout the film. And I think that that actually plays to the strength of the ending because he re you can see by the end of this movie, he really sticks to that conviction. He yeah. really does not want this out. He does not want his family taken down for this. Um, which I personally disagree with, but that doesn't hurt the film at all. Um, but yeah, so then he makes him burn the evidence. He burns it. He burns it all, which, burns which. Burns all of it. Then Driving brings. Driver's licenses, yeah, which, jewelry, pictures, all of it. I was very surprised about. Mm -hmm. And I, and I do. And I, I think another thing that this film does very, very well is it, sh it plays around with addictive personality. And how, you know, he really did try to beat this. He really did stay done. He really was gone from this. And he had his keepsakes. He had his trophies. And those kept him at bay. 
And he probably went down into his little, that's his little hangout down there. Mm -hmm. Where he goes and he has, I don't know why he has a shower down there, but he goes down there, he has some beers, he jerks off to, to his pictures. Satan off. And so now here, yeah, this is this is the this is the fucked up question of the movie, and I guess I gotta pose it now so we have some fun here. Like, his son finding out. Now, this would be much different if he did end up killing anybody, but he didn't. But he, he does lose his own life and it does fuck his family up. Even though his family isn't exposed in the end, he does lose his father, his wife, his mom loses her husband, his, his sister, sister loses a father. Yes. You know, everybody loses something because of this. He's a piece of shit, he should be dead. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that if he never found it, their life would have seemingly went off without a hitch. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't planned, of course. Um, <laughs> but... Like him finding out, and this is this is this goes to that. Like sometimes, the truth is better left buried, because he finds out. It never <laughs> is. He finds out, and it brings him out of retirement. If he never found out, do you think he would have eventually came out? Probably. Of retirement. They all do. I don't oh. know, but like, do the ten years. It's a long fucking time. Ain't shit. Like maybe once the kids went off to school. Yeah, maybe. Like once, right, like yeah. once he, yeah, his brother died. Yeah, I mean, and I his kids were away. Yeah. But he was like, he was struggling so hard with it already because his back was out, <laughs> which was great. It was such a great part of the movie. Like he's really an old was. killer coming out of retirement. He's yeah. like keeps complaining about his back pain, and I thought that was really well done too. Um, but it is. It's a really fucked up part about the movie. It, it's the um, the irony of the film is is if this kid didn't, then no one would have ever been in danger. He wouldn't have lost his father. She wouldn't have lost her husband. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, on the flip side of that, kind of as you're saying, like, no, the truth should come out. I agree. The truth should come out. This guy doesn't deserve a family. This 13, guy doesn't. Thirteen people. Yeah, he killed 13 people. He was about to kill families. another. How many fucking more would he have yeah, killed from there? Families, but... So, but would we be singing the same story here? Because that's where, that's where the question comes, though. It's like, would we be singing the same story here if he killed a few people first? Like, if he brought him out of retirement and then he killed a few women, tortured them horribly, would then the truth have been the right thing? It just so happens conveniently that the son catches him in the first murder and saves the woman's life. Right. But if she died and he killed two, three, four other people, would finding out the truth have been worth their death? The answer is no. <laughs> I mean, you can have another answer, obviously, but the answer to me is absolutely not. It's just, it is. It's one of the, it's the irony of the film. Honestly... I wish he would have killed somebody because I think that would have made the discussion of this film a little more interesting on that behalf. Like, fuck, man, the, fun, the son finding out costs this woman her life. Right. We don't have that part in this movie because she doesn't die. It, she, the, the family has cost their, their, you know, their husband, their, their father, whatever, um, and they'll never know. They're going to think like, oh, my poor husband. And that's why I don't like it. That's why I personally don't like it. That doesn't hurt the movie, but that's why I personally don't like it. Like, they should know what a piece of shit he is. No one should mourn this guy's loss. They shouldn't have held, like, a little vigil for him at the, you know, the little church there or whatever. Like, this motherfucker deserved to be forgotten forever. The horrible things he did to these women. Um, <laughs> it's just awful. So, I... I don't know, but that, that part really, really worked for me. Now, of course, the big moment of the movie for both of us, where we kind of looked at each other like, oh, fuck, was when the son walked in with the gun. And I just was like, I just did not expect that in the slightest. And it was so great. It was great. It was really wonderful. Um, I was saying right before, well, you skipped over the... Him trying to rec recreate the photos. Oh, well, okay. But I was going to get to that because we oh. were going to go back because it goes well, back in the time of, and then comes at up At one to point, him he's trying to recreate the photos that he had burned. And you can tell he's trying not to go out and kill anyone. He's trying to still have his... Which is the whole plan of addiction porn. thing. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, and I thought, I don't know if anyone, if for case you didn't understand what he was doing there, he was trying to not kill anyone. Yes. He was trying his damnedest to stage pictures to make it look like he was one of his victims so that would be good enough. So he really was trying his yes. damnedest. And, he and was, he you could tell he was freaks angry. out in the yeah. bed. He's screaming. He was angry. He's that violently it angry. It wasn't working. Yeah. Um, and the reason why, Such to me, it's scene. important is because but bef right before the scene where the son walks in with the gun, I was saying to Jason, I'm like, well, maybe it really wasn't him. Maybe yeah. it is his brother. And maybe he's just trying to, he's just trying the to recreate the photos. Because yeah. when he walks, when he breaks into this woman's home and... And he has a story about how he robbed a bank and he just needs to, you know, hide out for a second. And, you know, and then he like ties her, makes her tie herself up. And he's like, no, that's not good enough. And then he like starts to tie her up. And then I was like, well, maybe it was the brother and maybe he just needs the photos. And maybe that's really all it is. Right. Up and until then, he puts the bag over her head. Yes. And that's when you and were that's like, when, oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. And then two seconds later, the sun walks him with the gun so it was uh i liked how they kept me guessing like yeah. i didn't i mean i had a feeling it was him the whole time but it was kind of sure. like that whole maybe it's not right maybe it was the brother you're that juror maybe you're that juror that ever, just is like don't ever put me in a jury and be like, i'm not sure it'd have to have two forms of idea yeah. his grandma there to fucking identify him yes <laughs> Um, yeah, she's a big Chappelle show uh, fanatic, uh, for anyone who didn't understand that reference. Um, but no, I, I agree though. I, I do agree. I think, I think if he didn't put the bag over her head, it's still I still like, think we'd be sitting here debating. Yeah. Maybe the brother really was. <laughs> I think that you could still even argue. I can't. There's. That he was like, well, I can't no. let her go. No. I mean, I gotta kill her. He tried to her. kill his son. Okay. Yeah. That right there, like... Yeah, he's a killer. Yeah. I guess you're right. Without a doubt. Okay. Like, you try to kill Debate over. Son. No, yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like, up until the bag scene, you could absolutely mm -hmm. argue. Like, he's just trying to recreate his porn. Because his that's what he... His brother made him porn. Yeah. It has to come from a real place. Yeah. He can't buy bondage magazines because he knows those are actresses. Mm -hmm. He tried to stage them himself. And he's looking at him and he's like, I know that's fucking me. Like, I'm trying to jerk off and I know it's myself. Um, and what movie is that where he's having the fantasy in his head? Fuck. Um, and he's trying to jerk off and he's... It's a 40-year-old virgin, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is. When he's trying to jerk off to the girl and he, he's fantasizing about his head and he, she's like... She's giving him all the words that he's trying to masturbate to. And then she's like, oh, this isn't working. And it's in his voice. And it's like, because I am you. You, you know that. where those? Oh, it's fucking funny. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw I've it. I've laughed about this because I've actually had that. I've had that problem myself where I'm <laughs> laughing because I'm just like, I try to fantasize with a girl. And then I'm like, that's just me. That's me in my head making this girl do these things. That's not real. And I, I can't do it. I can't fantasize and do that. I just can't do it. That's something that I've never been able to do in my life. I can't fantasize and masturbate. It doesn't work. So, it's funny. I, it, I actually kind of have this guy's problem where it's like, no, I, I wouldn't be able to look at those pictures. I'd be like, that's fucking me with a mask on and a wig. Like, I'm not going to jerk off to a picture of myself in a wig. <laughs> it's just like I get what he's where he's coming from in that regard. Like this is fake shit. I need the real deal, Holyfield. <laughs> so it's funny. I just Fair I enough. when he did that in the movie, but that is such an excellent part of this film that I don't feel like I've ever seen explored before. He's trying his fucking damnedest to I mean, be done with this, yeah. and his son wouldn't have burned those pictures. Yeah, I don't yeah. think he would have went back to it. I think it's possible. I mean, maybe for sure. eventually, but yeah. But no, I think that was... the, that his stash mm -hmm. was his personal collection, and he was good with what he had. Mm -hmm. I think he stopped at thirteen for a reason. He had thirteen victims, and he that was like his goal. Thirteen's a very specific number. Uh huh. Huh. Um, and I, I do. I think that was it. That was his trophy. He kept it. He had his pride. He had his thing. And he, I think he was going to... Honestly, I think he would have went out and killed 13 more people. 
I think that was his end goal, and he would have had to get the pictures. He would have had this and that. Why he puts a clove hitch at her residence for then his son to come and find out the clove hitch killer has returned all of a sudden. That is is just, I think that's just his tick. Like yeah. He can't not do it. He's so well, fucking... Yeah, they have to do um, it. What, what, they have to do it. I was just going to say, I like how they piece things together in it, too. Because they, they do it in movies all the time, but... I thought it was really cool how they show you something and then they go back and they show you how they got to that. They, they show their home. Oh, yeah. I thought that was really cool that they did that in this film, too. Yeah, and it really worked well, too, because I was... I was actually... It, it answered a big question of mine. I was like, why is this guy being such a dick to this girl who helped him out? Like, why would he leave without telling her? Oh, that's so right. So when she comes yeah. to the house and she's like, Cause dad says he doesn't know he's there. Yeah. She's like, he, he left, didn't he tell you? And she's like, oh. And then the dad calls conveniently and I actually rolled my eyes at that. I was like, oh, how convenient that he just so happened to call right in that moment. But then I did commend her for being a smart girl to be like, oh, I got to get out of here. got to run because she's scared of him. But then we come to find out that he called, not only called her into the house because he the saw son. his mom in yeah. drag, <laughs> but also that he then texted her and it came up as, or he called her, I guess, but he called her right in that moment uh, to, to get her out of the house. So that all played out beautifully. It, yeah. it really worked well because it, it took me back to the scene from before and completely restructured everything that I had already previously thought in a very smart and and in a sense, in a way that made sense. And I really dug that about that as well. Um, I also do love that uh, the son puts him to the final test because I actually hated that at first. He hands the dad the gun, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Don't get stupid." And I actually said this out loud, mm -hmm. like. Don't get stupid, movie. Because yeah. I was like, don't do this. Don't give the dad the loaded gun. This is so dumb. But he, it, no, this is him. This is the way I take it anyways. Like, he needed to know his dad was able, like, willing to kill him. Mm. Like, he was like, is he so far gone that he would kill me? So he hands him an a unloaded gun. <clears throat> I would think a guy that was this good with guns would actually check the chamber for a bullet. But whatever, that doesn't matter. He just pulls the trigger on him. Which, yeah. He was going to shoot his fucking son straight up right there in, in this the woman's face. house. And that's just no, you know. And, his, you and know, then they he take chokes him. him. But he was going to kill him, yeah. Like, and then he tries to kill him anyway. Like, no, like, messing around choking. Like, no. like you're, you're, you're dying right now. And I thought for sure, like, when they clubbed him over the head, that he was going to come back for one final mm -hmm. scare kind of thing. And no, no, mm -hmm. no. And just cuts to a year later. And he's missing. No, it was only a few days. No. Oh, well, then, a total of then it goes to the funeral. It goes to the sign missing of him missing. A week later? Maybe. Oh, like oh, five maybe days or something like that. It's Days later. It cuts to the picture of the missing dad. And then... Okay, one year. No, yeah, yeah. not one year. One week later. Maybe yeah. that's what it was. It yeah, and then they're having his little vigil, right? That's what they call this Well, the, da the mom gets the phone call. Because they were still looking for the dad at this point. The mom gets the phone call, and they go to the that church. That he's declared dead. Oh, right, but he committed right. yeah. suicide, supposedly. Then, yeah. Yeah, that he didn't shoot himself. But yeah, that was cool and then that, they, that we get to see them staging his death. And yeah, because they show that, like, the dad's missing, and then they go to the funeral and do all of that, and it was possible suicide. And then I think that's when it goes back to the staging his death and making it and showing you what they did, you know, trying to make it look like suicide. Like, they killed him but making it look like suicide. I like the final confrontation there. It's not overdone. It's not like overly emotional. It's not like they're going back and forth and it's like, dad, I got to do it. Or like, mm -mm. you know, he's not pleading for his life. He's not anything. He just looks at him and he's just like, I know what I'm, I know what's happening here. Yeah. And the son just kind of looks at him, points the gun in his face. And then it cuts to him kind of, you know, saying this thing at the end about his dad. At the church. At the I don't know, what does he say? What's his final statement about his dad here at the end? He says something, and it's kind of like gut wrenching because yeah. he says something that, like, I think they take it one way, but we're like, we know what you mean, like, wink, wink. I think he just said that he loved it was his the dad. the ugliest fucking wink. I don't know what the hell that was. Um, better than your wink, though. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. But. Yeah, no, I, I, I dug how all that transpired at the end. I mm -hmm. thought that that, you know, it could have been blown out of proportion. It could have been dragged for too long. It, could, it was just 
cut and dry. And, and as I said, even though I disagree with what he did, I think that it does fit his character throughout the film to hide it. He doesn't want it. Because as I said, this isn't a family. I think that, I think that this writing here is, is consistent because if he hated his mom, if he rejected God, if he rejected the notion of his perfect little family and whatnot, he would have wanted to tear it down. He would have wanted this be, to be exposed, like his dad's like this perfect guy, and it's like, no, I'm bringing this shit down. I'm gonna show you all, you losers, what all this is about. No, like, I think he's a good Christian boy who got stuck with impossible. this horrendous, impossible situation. <laughs> My God, could you imagine being like that hardcore Christian and then finding out that your dad's like this? bondage loving murder serial killer right like. no i i don't think anyone could could fathom that whether you're a christian <laughs> or an atheist or whatever i think that'd be hard be on little, anybody if i found out hard. mark It'd smith be... was a bondage loving fucking killer <laughs> sure I, I don't know what yeah right yeah right but my dad and him I mean, I mean, he's the seemingly perfect man, nice guy, never heard cheesy, a fly, yeah. cheesy puns and whatnot, yeah. yeah. Makes jokes and... <laughs> no, I don't he know. He is a serial killer, though. Right, I am. Um, but yeah. I uh, love the and, movie. I thought it was great. I thought it was wonderful. I thought that they did everything perfect. Yeah, it's a damn good one. I, it's some that I would... Your brother hated it, though. Really ...buy right? and watch it again. He said it was fine. It's fine. It was fine. It was good. He said it was good. Nothing, you know, nothing to write home about. Mm. So, um, I'm going to go get a pen and paper, and I'm going to write home about this. Me too. I'm just going to put it in the mail and mail it to myself. And I'm just going to leave I'm it out there home. on the front. Just, home. <laughs> just deliver this to home. <laughs> um, but, yeah, anyway... Uh, Obviously, you saw it if you're watching still. I would like to know if you think we're fucking crazy, this movie's terrible, if maybe we, we showed you something you noticed. If, please tell us if we missed something, that I'm you sure that... a different interpretation. Did you think that this guy was the killer of the whole movie? I kind of, I figured he was, but I don't understand where she's coming from. It, they do play it very, very confusingly. Yeah. Up until he walked, you know, the bagging moment. But, yeah. yeah. The more important question, though, is, and I'm... Here comes a joke. It's not a joke. It's a joke. It's not a joke. Okay. Here's a real serious question, guys. <laughs> I'm going to get real fucking... I'm going to have a Do real serious face. Do you think Chad Michael Murray had an illegitimate child and gave him up for adoption, and here he is, 20 years later, in the Cold Pitch Killer... I try to keep a serious face the whole time, but I like I, I do. you could tell you there was laughing in the <laughs> eyes. I tried. I was like, <laughs> I think, I think that yeah, was. it's just good for sure. Uh, but anyway, guys, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, uh, we want to do the Hannibal series. Is there any movie you want to see her review with me or without me? Stop saying without me, okay, people. I'm not going anywhere. She's not doing by her fucking self. You don't want me not to do it by myself. Yeah, she'll I'd steal like, all my dish shit. Be like, yeah, this movie's great. Now let's talk makeup. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. Putting on fucking. What was this? What is? This is like you putting on <laughs> eyeliner, right? You gotta pull down the <laughs> eyelid. You gotta pull down the eyelid to put on eyeliner, right? I don't. You don't? No. You just do it like straight out like that? Yeah. I mean, just if like I need this? to like get but it most deep, girls, they kind of pull it apart, if right? I need to like to get, get it away from like super deep, I will. But no, usually you can just kind of look down and just color it in. But some deep. people pull it. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm sure I've seen some that before. Do, but I call those wrinkles. More, that's more of like a um, what, what is contact this? lenses. <laughs> that's more contact <laughs> lenses. So yeah. I don't know anything about makeup. I so. try to teach him. He has no interest. Why would I have any interest? Because it's fun. Totally. Mm. All right, guys. Thank you. Good night.